Hi. Today I'm talking about a framework you probably have heard of that is called GIO, 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 uh, and that is an immediate mode GUI for Go. So it draws its own widgets and just in the unlikely event that you don't know what an immediate mode GUI is, that's a framework that comes from the gaming world. Usually these were drawn on top of games. So games try to draw their world as fast as possible. So they have a render loop and they try to render as fast as possible or limit it to some hertz rates like 60 FPS, for instance, and the GUI would be drawn on top of it. And so immediate mode GUI means that you basically tell the framework what to draw, but you maintain your own state for the widgets. So the widgets originally at least did not have any state in these frameworks. But you can, of course, then build widgets with state on top of that. And some of these frameworks already do that for you to some extent, or at least they buffer because the problem used to be with immediate mode GUI frameworks that they monopolize the CPU because they try to draw as fast as possible in the render loop. And that is not suitable for desktop applications, even though it might be suitable for certain types of games, not all of them. So that can be fixed with some smart buffering and generally these immediate mode GUIs have this kind of buffering and only draw when something changes. Now, GU is often recommended for Go as an alternative to fine. For instance, if you're fine with an immediate mode uh, GUI, if you're fine with this kind of concept, that you have a tight rendering loop and you tell it what to draw in each for each frame in this rendering loop. Now, the cool thing about Geo and why it's often recommended is that it supports so many platforms. As you can see here on the web page, it supports Linux, macOS, Windows, Android, iOS, then of course also free BSD and OpenBSD. Some of the others also support uh, these, uh, but I doubt many people use them still. I, I used to use uh, OpenBSD a long, long time ago in the 90s, but that, yeah, that's uh, another time. Then also what's most important, WebAssembly. And WebAssembly, of course, is very cool if that's supported. And you can see here on the web page, the demo application, or one of the demo applications of Geo, and you can run it. And here you see the application is running. It shows some text. It has some internal scroll. It doesn't have the scroll bar for the text, but that could also be implemented. It has an edit field with a hint. It has some kind of, you know, um, color transition and buttons and so on. And what's really cool about this is that shows you the, the gamish nature of these kind of frameworks is when you press this transform button, you see it can transform the whole output because in the end it's just drawing and uh, you can have a transformation for the drawing and it continues to function. So I could continue inputting here something. It's just a bit difficult clicking it. And if I click this button again, this checkbox, then it's back to normal. Now that's pretty cool. Let me show you some examples. Let's start with the Hello World examples to give you an idea of how this works. You have uh, different packages. So it's fi uh, nicely modularized. Whatever you need to import, you import and the rest you don't use. And that's always good. Keeps the binaries a bit smaller, right? And then you have basically one loop. That's the render loop. You have an internal event system that also involves this kind of buffering. So the CPU is not spiking out um, when it's doing nothing. But um, so here, for instance, you have the app destroy event. If somebody clicks the close button, you get that. And then you just leave the rendering loop and you have the app frame event. And in this event, that's the main draw event, you draw everything you want to draw. And here you have the primitives from the framework. You have a graphics context that you have to obtain. And then you can have some material design, for instance, that's the theme that's set in the beginning. And then you just draw text with, that says, hello, Geo, with a certain color. That's very straightforward. <clears throat> now, if we go to the kitchen example, Let's run this. Go run kitchen. Go. And you will see it compiles and it shows you exactly what you saw in the browser. 
So this gives you the same look and feel on every platform because it draws everything itself, which can be good, but it can also be bad. What you don't get is some kind of native look and feel for the widgets. You draw your own widgets. What you get is the same look and feel on every platform. And of course, you can customize that to your likings in any way you want. You can draw your own widgets. It's basically just drawing primitives that you have to write. You have to take care of the graphics context and the rest is drawing. And you can, of course, theme that and style that as you wish, which is pretty important because I would say that this default theme is not very compelling. It depends on what you want to do. Maybe for some mobile apps, this material theme is fine. Maybe depends also a bit on the color choices here. As you can see here, this also works. Here, you have a native window and you have the transformation on top of it. And then you can show this transformation. And that could, of course, be used, for instance, for custom animations you want to have in your app, for some you know, sliding or whatever you want to write and whatever you're able to write with your graphics primitives. This is CPU accelerated, right? So it's not necessarily super fast, but it's also certainly not very slow. And you can probably write a game with it. And of course, then Geo would be the perfect choice for the user interface for such a game. If you want to write a mobile game that works on all these platforms and maybe also has some desktop port, that would be a really cool framework to use. Now let's quickly take a look at the source code here. Now it's basically the same. You have here some render loop, you have some events, you have the app destroy event. You would also have some key handling events, I think uh, somewhere there, but you also have the frame event and you draw what you want to draw here. And you can of course put that in a function and several functions. Uh, what you have to bear in mind, though, is that since this is drawn as fast as possible, to keep the frame rate acceptable, this should be fast. So you should take care that you don't draw too much, then you only draw what you need to draw in each frame and keep that kind of crisp. Here you have your transformation function, and this transformation function basically transforms this whole output port or viewport. And that's pretty cool, right? So you can use that for all kinds of animations if you know how to do these kind of transformations with graphics. Now, what's the disadvantage of this kind of framework? I've used a similar one that is spelled almost exactly the same. It's called GIU. So this is GIO. GIU, GIU is uh, a descendant of the original immediate mode GUI that was called I am GUI and it's quite popular. Um, it's written in C and GIU, I think, uses the underlying C. So it uses C Go, whereas Geo does not do that. And my experience with this type of framework in general was that it's fine for simple stuff. Once it gets complicated, you start emulating stateful widget. APIs, you're basically ending up writing your own widgets with state, say, say a modified text input field, a modified multi-line text input field, and so on, where you put in more and more of your functionality, and then you lose the simplicity of the framework, and you basically get the rendering for each of these widgets you've written, and then you end up writing a widget to toolkit uh, like the ones I've talked about earlier that maintains its own state, where you change the state and then duplicate the state in your data classes. That's, of course, not the idea of these frameworks. The idea is here that you have a data layer and you just visualize the data layer. And if you do that correctly, then it you might be able to keep it simple, but the experience tells me at least that it's really hard to keep that simple and you end up replicating functionality, you know, from stateful widget toolkits. So if you do that, then you have a very low level framework and you're putting a lot of work into it. And then it might be better to choose one of those stateful widget frameworks anyway, like GTK or Qt, for instance, or even fine. Right? So you have to be careful about the requirements and to keep it simple, uh, it's suitable for 
any kind of simple game like GUI. So if you have a user interface that just involves a few buttons and you want to develop that quickly, I would wholeheartedly recommend Geo, especially with this impressive list of platforms it runs on. And WebAssembly is always great if you have that. And you can, in, in the worst case, just put it on a web page, right? That's cool. You can make a web application out of your app. That is really cool. But again, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this for more complex user interfaces and say large desktop projects. Check out the documentation, it's well documented and it has quite some community support. Check out the FAQ and give it a try. There's more examples to check out too. So uh, you have to, in the end, decide what are your requirements and check whether the requirements are fulfilled by the framework, right? In this case, it cannot draw uh, videos. So if you need videos, you can't do that, but it can do anything with images. It's reasonably fast. It can be used for some small games. It can be used as a kind of gamish GUI. And for these kind of applications, it's great. So that's all for today. Hope you like this video and see you another time. Bye.